Hello, this is Dr. Benjamin Norris from the Chemistry Department at Frostburg State University. Today we're going to practice working with delocalized electrons. Let's practice. For each lone pair in the structure of histamine, which is shown, determine if that lone pair is localized or delocalized. Once I start the timer, you will have 10 seconds to complete the problem. If 10 seconds is not long enough, feel free to pause the video. Remember, you can pause the video if you need more time. The first thing we want to do in figuring out whether any of the lone pairs in histamine are localized or delocalized, is we need to find the lone pairs in histamine. Here is a structure of histamine with all the lone pairs shown. Each of the nitrogen atoms has a lone pair. Remember that nitrogen prefers to have three bonds and one lone pair in its structure. Now we will consider each lone pair one by one. The easiest lone pair to assign is the one on the nitrogen at the end of the chain on the right side of the molecule. This lone pair is not an allyl position. It is not next to a double bond. It cannot participate in resonance. It must be a localized pair of electrons. Now let's consider the lone pair on the nitrogen at the top of the structure on the left. This lone pair is on an atom that's neighboring to a double bond. And we can draw resonance structures using that lone pair, delocalizing them to other positions around the ring. Here is one of those resonance structures. But there is another one that you might have seen as well. This lone pair is an allyl lone pair and is delocalized. Now let's consider the last lone pair of the molecule. I'm redrawing histamine so that we can use a structure that hasn't been cluttered up. This lone pair on the bottom also looks like it's on an atom that's neighboring to a pi bond. And we maybe think we can draw a resonance structure that will uh, you know, involve that lone pair. And it's tempting to assign it as, as a delocalized lone pair. However, there are two reasons that it's not. First, there's something particularly terrifying about the resonance structure that we just drew but maybe you don't recognize it initially. That nitrogen atom with its two bonds and no lone pairs should be sp hybridized with a linear geometry, but a linear geometry is not possible in a cyclic structure. The other thing that's a problem is that lone pairs in order to be delocalized must be in a p orbital. And the p orbital on that nitrogen is already being used to participate in the pi bond shown. In fact, in many of the resonance structures you can draw for histamine, there is a double bond at that nitrogen already using up its p orbital. Only the resonance structure that's now showing in the middle of the page that we drew for the one delocalized pair of electrons, only in that resonance structure is there no double bond at the bottom nitrogen. But that's also the only resonance structure where that nitrogen has two lone pairs. One of those lone pairs is in a p orbital, but the other one is not. So in general, if it looks like a lone pair might be able to participate in resonance, but there's already a pi bond at that atom, you should be suspicious that that lone pair is not capable of being in a p orbital. And because it's not in a p orbital, it's localized. Let's do another practice problem. We're going to use histamine again, but we're going to determine the hybridization and geometry for each nitrogen atom in histamine. Again, the structure is shown. Once I start the timer, you will have 10 seconds to do the problem. Feel free to look back at the last problem to remember which nitrogen atoms had localized and delocalized lone pairs. And if 10 seconds is not long enough, feel free to pause the video. Remember, if you need more time, feel free to pause the video. In order to determine the geometry and hybridization for each nitrogen atom, we first need to know whether the lone pairs on those nitrogen atoms are localized or delocalized. We'll see why in a minute. So here is a summary of what we determined in the last question. We have one delocalized lone pair on the nitrogen atom in the upper left 
the other two nitrogen atoms have localized lone pairs. We need to know if these lone pairs are delocalized because if they are delocalized they must be in p orbitals which means the hybridization at that position might not initially match what we would expect. Starting from the bottom left, this lone pair is localized. That nitrogen atom has two bonds and one lone pair for the sake of counting up electron domains. It has bent geometry based on trigonal planar and must be sp2 hybridized. On the top left, we also have an sp2 hybridized nitrogen atom. This nitrogen atom has three bonds and one lone pair. And while we might be tempted to call it sp3 hybridized with a trigonal pyramidal geometry, remember that the lone pair needs to be in a p orbital. And in order for that p orbital to be there, we need to be sp2 hybridized. Because we're sp2 hybridized with three bonds, the geometry at that nitrogen is trigonal planar. For the last nitrogen, we have three bonds and one lone pair, and that lone pair is localized. So we would assign that geometry and hybridization as usual. This nitrogen atom is sp3 hybridized with trigonal pyramidal geometry. Let's do one final practice problem. Identify the atoms in the structure shown that have partial charges due to delocalization. Once I start the timer, you will have 10 seconds. If 10 seconds is not long enough, feel free to pause the video. Remember, if you need more time, feel free to pause the video. The first thing we want to do in order to determine whether there are any partial charges due to delocalization are to draw the resonance structures that would happen because there are delocalized electrons. This molecule happens to have five resonance contributors, including the one shown. Here are the other four. You can see from these four resonance structures that in addition to two that have no formal charges, there are three with formal charges. All three of them have a positive formal charge on the oxygen, and then there is a negative formal charge that moves around the ring at three different positions. This particular pattern of negative formal charges on this molecule is going to be important when we study the reactivity of benzene and its derivatives towards substitution reactions. But for now, let's just assign the partial charges. Remember, anywhere we see a formal charge in one resonance contributor, we have a partial charge of that sign in the true structure of the molecule. So here is the structure of the molecule with those partial charges shown. The oxygen has a partial positive charge because in three of the resonance structures it has a positive formal charge. The three carbons that bear negative formal charges in three of the resonance structures are shown bearing partial negative charges on the structure on the right. This concludes our practice about delocalization. Thank you for watching.